Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about using peppermint oil in your garden. I'm going to show you how to make the recipe and then we're going to walk through the garden and use the spray and I'll show you what problems it really does uh, the trick on. You know, it's not a miracle cure, it doesn't fix everything, but it's one of the top three sprays I recommend for your garden. It's organic, it's clean, you can spray it and you can, I mean, you'd be fine eating right after it too, but you know, light rain washes off light wash in the house is fine, but you're just using basic soap and peppermint oil. You can also use rosemary oil. I sell both of those at my seed shop. I actually mix one teaspoon of rosemary oil and one teaspoon of peppermint oil as a spray. If you just want to get started, I recommend starting with the peppermint oil. So let's go with the recipe first. You want a one gallon sprayer, fill it full of water first, then you're going to add in your soap. We'll talk about the soap in a second. Don't put the soap in, then the water it gets too foamy, it causes a problem. So the soap that I use is Castile soap. Some people say Castile soap. It's pure soap. There's no detergents in there. You can find it all over the place. I don't sell that at my seed shop. And if you're going to use the Castile soap, you want one tablespoon per gallon. It's a clean, pure soap. Now, if you're using detergents like Dawn dishwashing det uh, detergent, dish soap, that has more potency to it. So you're not going to start with a tablespoon of the detergent soaps. Start with a quarter teaspoon to a teaspoon and add more if you need to. You're only putting in enough soap so that when you shake it, oil which normally floats will get dispersed through the water. It will stay dispersed for a good three or four minutes so that when you spray, you're spraying oil. What happens if you don't use soap? Oil floats up here, you shake it up, the oil quickly goes back to the top. By the time you start spraying, you're just spraying water and then as you go you know, towards the top, eventually you're going to be spraying concentrated peppermint oil or rosemary oil and that's a problem. So you do need soap. So I've basically the formula is this one teaspoon to two teaspoons of peppermint oil or rosemary oil or a combination of both. I use two teaspoons. It's really effective. I've found that it does not harm any of my plant leaves. I haven't used it on everything. So what I recommend is when you start using a new spray, you test spray. Spray the plants that you're going to spray it on. Wait 48 hours. Look for damage. That's on you and it's a really good way to practice bringing sprays into your garden. All right, so I'm going to set this up one tablespoon of soap. I'm going to put in two teaspoons of peppermint oil, rosemary oil, or a combination of both. If you are just getting started, I recommend going with the peppermint oil. It's really, really effective. So let me mix up the spray. So this is my peppermint oil. This is how I use it. I just, you know, fill it up from the spigot. How often do you use it? Another question I get. So peppermint oil spray you can really use to mask the scents of your garden to keep the bad bugs from finding your plants. In that case you really want to spray every seven to ten days. You can spray more often. If you get a problem in your garden like spider mites and things that I'll show you, you can really spray every three days until the problem's under control. The cool thing about these oils, the peppermint oil, rosemary oils, oils, is that you can't really overdo it. You're not going to do great harm. You're going to do more harm by using too much soap in here then using two teaspoons of peppermint oil in there. So we have the one gallon of water, two teaspoons of peppermint oil, rosemary oil, combination of both, or combination of both, and then one tablespoon of this castile soap. Shake it up before each use and you want a nice fine spray. That is my grape plant. No particular benefit to spraying your grape plant, but that's what you want to do is you just want to soak it down. So let's walk over to the garden and I'll, just, I'll start showing you um, what problems this really helps with. So this is one of my cucumber plants. There is dust on the outer leaves. That's Captain Jack's dead bug dust. It's a, a, a organic dust, insect dust. I talk about that in other videos. For this plant, you can see that the growing tips are nice and green. And then when you come over here, you start seeing problems. This yellowing pattern on there, that's not really from an insect. That's not treatable by the peppermint oil. But if you turn it over, you can see to the right of my thumb, 
hopefully. There's little specks in there. They're self-body insects, usually spider mites. This works really well against the soft-bodied insects, especially the spider mites. If you get a little bit of this peppermint oil in your eye while you're spraying, it burns a little bit, it irritates you, but imagine what this concentration does if it hurts your eye a little bit, what it does to these tiny spider mites. So spider mites are often a problem for a lot of our gardens. Peppermint oil is a great solution to that. If you have an outbreak of spider mites every three days, you don't kill off every single spider mite, but you spider mite, but you really slow down their growth and their progression across your plant. So you really want to get the undersides of the leaves, shake this up between every spray, and then soak the tops down. Spider mites live on the undersides of the leaves. If you ever wonder why you see uh, your bean plants, we'll get to examples of that, or your cucumber plants. The spider mites start at the bottom and then they actually just work their way up the plant. They never start way high up at the tip and work their way down. They can't fly. They're going to be working, crawling their way up. So the peppermint oil, rosemary oil, combination of both will help slow down and take care of spider mite problems. Sometimes it gets rid of them completely. Okay, let's go find some other problems. So this is one of my zucchini plants, and on this leaf, that pattern is powdery mildew. Now, peppermint oil, rosemary oil, isn't going to be the best defense against powdery mildew. Other sprays are better for that, but it can help slow the progression. I wouldn't use it if you have an outbreak. I would, come in, I would go and use like Serenade, that's an organic spray. I wouldn't use these oils to fix an outbreak, but spraying the tops of the leaves can slow down the progress, can make it difficult for the powdery mildew to, to establish itself, but it's not primarily used for that. What it's used for in here is really a masking agent. When you pick a zucchini squash off your plant or you cut back a leaf, maybe you're removing leaves that are damaged, you break the plant, pheromones come out, basically the plant scent, and that attracts a lot of the bad insects to your plant. So you can spray once a week, soak your squash and zucchini plants down with your peppermint oil spray, and that helps mask the scent of the plant from bad bugs being able to find the plant. And that's probably what I use these oils for in the beginning of the season, just as a masking agent. If you do have an outbreak, again, I recommend a different product, but you would just spray the tops of the leaves, the undersides of the leaves, and there's some antiseptic qualities to peppermint oil, but I don't want to say it's going to fix this powdery mildew, because I'd be lying to you. Right over here, I have one variety of bean plant, and this plant was beat up a while back. Peppermint oil spray has helped get it back on track. You can see all the new leaves forming and the plants doing really well. Beans are every well, everywhere. And you start again. When you're seeing this kind of damage, that's usually some sort of insect. If you get a magnifying glass, you can see sometimes, you know, small white spider webs. You can see the spider mites, but it works great on beans. Spray it down. Since we came to a new plant, you'd want to shake it up, spray the undersides, and you just work your way up. And you can see, since I've been using it, new leaves are coming in, and the plant looks pretty good. I mean, I'm happy with this. It's still producing. They don't need to be beautiful, perfect plants. You want to use these sprays, slow down the spider mites, helps with aphids, irritates them, keeps them away, can even kill them off. The key to using any spray in your garden is a regular routine, but this plant's doing really well. Let's see what else we can find. So here are some radishes. My ground radishes have this look to them. If I go into my container uh, radishes that I have in a flower box, they're all perfectly green. No discoloration, no problem at all. This is typically some sort of insect on the undersides of your leaves, and the same thing. Spray the top of the radish leaves down. This pattern is right in there. That's from snails and slugs. This isn't gonna stop snails and slugs. 
I use iron phosphate baits, but this get in on the undersides of the plant leaves and that will take care of the problems. And you can see right here, new leaf is coming in. It's a little bit healthier. I haven't sprayed this garden for a while, to be honest with you. So things, you know, tend to get a little bit out of control. I'm also recommending you keep a journal. So I know that in September, late August, if I plant my ground radishes, this problem appears. I could get a micro, I could get a magnifying glass and kind of look under there, see what's going on. But you'd spray the undersides of the leaves, tops of the leaves. If you have an outbreak or something like that, again, every three days till it seems like it's under control, you'll know it is because new leaves will be coming in. They won't be affected. You can go to every seven days, every 10 days, every 14 days, just depending on your garden and your garden zone. All right, let's keep moving down. So these are my fall weather crops. A lot of them are in. You can see that I have garden fabric over them. That's to protect them from the white moth that flies around the green cabbage and lays the eggs of the green cabbage looper. Peppermint oil spray isn't going to kill them. If you have green cabbage loopers or worms eating holes in your kales, your broccolis, your cauliflowers, all the related plants, this is not going to stop it. I recommend neem oil for that. I do sell that at my seed shop. But again, as a masking spray you can spray the top sides the undersides but really when you're just doing masking you're soaking the top down that will give off the peppermint scent if that white moth is coming it may repel them keep them from laying eggs down I don't want to preach this as you know it stops the green cabbage looper moth from coming but it does help repel and the whole key is to really try and minimize damage in your garden. You can't have a perfect garden, but you can really minimize the problems that show up. Okay, let's keep wor working our way down. So here's my eggplant. Eggplant are notorious for attracting, I just forgot what they were called. <laughs> notorious for attracting flea beetles. Flea beetles will cover your plant. They're little black specks. They look like this. That is actually not a worry. Those are actually seeds from something that fell on them. But the flea beetles are a little bit smaller than these black specks. They crawl on your leaves. If you touch them, you'll see them hop. They eat holes in there. The peppermint oil spray will help repel them. It will help irritate them. It doesn't necessarily kill them off, but it helps keep them from establishing. I found that insect dust is the best thing for um, the flea beetles. But look how beautiful that leaf is. This is one group I've actually been spraying regularly with the peppermint oil. When you start seeing this pattern, that could be insects on the underside. Spray the top down, spray the underside down. And as you do that, you're going to see your plant greenery start coming back. The new leaves are going to look great. And you're containing the problem. That's what you want to do with the peppermint oil, the rosemary oil. You see other holes up here? That's some other kind of beetle. This doesn't work against larger beetles. Doesn't work, like I was saying before, against caterpillars and stuff like that. I mean, let's look, the leaves look good. And I would just go in here once a week, spray the undersides, spray the top sides. All right, I think I have uh, one more example with beans, and I'm going to show you uh, just what the spider mites do to beans and show you some examples of where I sprayed and didn't spray. Before I get to the beans, I wanted to show you some container potatoes. Potato leaves should look nice and healthy and green. They're going to start getting beat up. And you see little spotting on there, like right in there. That often can be, again, spider mites, soft-bodied insects. Just soak it down. The peppermint oil spray really works. I found with potatoes nicely. Soak the undersides. And that will help slow any problems. A lot of times it can fix problems with the soft-bodied insects and your plants will do really, really well. So here is a rattlesnake bean. Beautiful beans, they're still producing. You come down here and you see the damage. Usually that's what spider mites look like. I haven't been spraying them um, from the beginning. These leaves are all infected. Came in, started about last week and you just spray the undersides. As you do that, it slows down the spider mites. Sometimes it will kill them off and the new leaves coming in look great. Just leave the damaged leaves on and you can see how they work their way up. 
and then as you come up here things are a little bit greener there are more you know there are problems that's yellowing in there that's not from an insect your peppermint oil spray won't really help with that won't hurt but you would get in here spray everything down and again if you have a sort of infestation like this every three days you know maybe three rounds of that and then you can go to once a week nothing is set in stone I can't give you the exact way to spray here's a plant that I've been spraying more regularly and it looks pretty good coming over here you see all the leaves have been killed off from here this is actually from a chewing beetle all these holes it's different than spider mites and when I finally got to it started spraying and really halted the movement of everything going up the plant a couple more so here are three different pole beans and I'll try and explain it to you the best way possible so you can get an understanding of what's going on first plant spider mites came in all at the same time second plant you can see an idea third plant this plant did not get any spray whatsoever and you can see what it looks like this plant got the peppermint oil spray I don't know maybe a week or two after the one on the left and it's starting to recover looking pretty good and getting under control this one you know that week that I noticed the spider mites I started spraying and you can see that it just looks really really good these leaves were the leaves that were infected they're gonna die off that's just natural dieback but it stopped this kind of pattern on here because it really repelled off the spider mites that were on there and I'm you know treating this once a week coming in spraying under there and as you work your way up you see the plants doing really really well now different varieties of beans there's three different varieties here may be more susceptible to spider mites soft-bodied insects but the sprays work perfectly the same and the whole idea is is not to again have a perfect beautiful green no issue plant it's to have one that's productive and you can see just all the production in here and this is just getting peppermint oil spray and I think just to kind of sum up using these sprays you can use it on your tomato plants if you start seeing patterns like that you can get spider mites on here you can get aphids on there works perfectly fine you'd use it the same exact way is that if you're gonna start this for the first time you know you can find it in my seed shop I recommend peppermint oil if you just want to go with one you can use rosemary oil there is a little bit of a difference you can find that out on the website but it's not significant now that I've been using this for a couple of years I like to use a teaspoon of peppermint oil a teaspoon of rosemary oil oil and one gallon of water with one tablespoon of the castile soap hope you enjoyed the video hope this gives you some idea of how to use these sprays in your garden and I wish you great success for the rest of 2019 in the fall and hopefully you're starting to plan out what you're going to be doing in 2020 thanks for watching